Welcome to Miss Scarlet, the place to be feminine. Subscribe and enjoy. Jake's heart pounded as he crept into Anna's bedroom, listening carefully for any signs that his sister or parents were still home. The house seemed still and quiet. Breathing a small sigh of relief, Jake shut Anna's door behind him and gazed around the room, his eyes widening as they fell upon Anna's closet. With trembling fingers, Jake slid open the closet door. An array of colorful dresses and skirts greeted him, hanging neatly in a row. He reached out and brushed his hand lightly over the fabrics. Silky, velvety, lacy, soft cotton. A thrill ran through him at the sensation. Glancing over his shoulder one more time, Jake selected a light blue sundress patterned with small white flowers. He pulled the dress from the hanger and held it up, admiring how the skirt flared out. Swallowing hard, Jake quickly unbuttoned his jeans and shimmied out of them, kicking them aside. He yanked his t-shirt over his head and let it drop to the floor. Standing there in just his boxers, Jake carefully unzipped the back of the sundress and stepped into it, pulling it up. The silky fabric slid over his skin, caressing him with a delicious coolness. Jake guided his arms through the ruffled straps and reached behind to zip it up as far as he could manage. He smoothed the dress over his hips and thighs, marveling at the feel of it against his bare legs. Nervously, he took a few steps over to Anna's full-length mirror. Jake gazed at his reflection, his breath catching. The dress fit him surprisingly well, cinching in at his slender waist and flowing out around his legs. He slowly spun in a circle, enchanted by the way the skirt twirled and swished around him. An unfamiliar giddiness bubbled up in his chest. He had never felt so light, so free, so pretty. With each passing minute, Jake grew bolder, rummaging through Anna's things with less hesitation. He slipped his feet into a pair of strappy white sandals. They pinched his toes, but he barely noticed too caught up in the click-clack of the little heels on the hardwood as he tottered around the room. Next, he found a floppy sun hat and placed it atop his head, admiring this new look in the mirror. Finally, he discovered Anna's makeup case. Thrilled by his transformation so far, Jake eagerly unzipped the case and rooted through the tubes and compacts. He selected a subtle pink lipstick and carefully applied it puckering his lips the way he'd seen Anna do. The lipstick felt slick and waxy as he rubbed his lips together. Next, he brushed some shimmery blush over his cheeks, leaving behind a rosy glow. Lastly, he swiped on some mascara, struggling not to blink as the little wand swept over his lashes. Jake assessed his reflection one last time, his heart fluttering wildly in his chest. He could barely recognize himself, Peering out from under the brim of the sun hat was a different person. Softer. Daintier. Unrestrained by the confines of masculinity. A dreamy smile played about his pink lips. Jake twirled once more, relishing the rush of satin on his thighs and the bounce of the skirt around his legs. He felt giddy, intoxicated by his own image. The time flew by in a whirlwind of ruffles and lipstick and glee. Before Jake knew it, the morning sun was high in the sky, and his stomach grumbled for lunch. Knowing his mom would be home soon, Jake reluctantly unzipped the dress and removed the accessories. He carefully returned everything to its proper place, trying to leave no trace of his secret explorations. He quickly dressed in his own clothes again, feeling strangely bereft as the rough denim and cotton once more chafed his skin. After that, not a day went by that Jake didn't think longingly of that blue sundress, of that magical feeling of freedom and beauty. He lay awake at night, mind swimming with visions of silk and lace and the click of strappy sandals. It became harder and harder to act normal around his family, to sit at the dinner table in his restrictive boy clothes and not let his eyes linger on Anna 
and his mom's pretty outfits. He was consumed by a need to feel that again. It was nearly two weeks later when Jake finally had another chance. His dad was away on a business trip, and Anna was sleeping over at a friend's house. Only his mom remained, and she had a long list of errands to run that Saturday morning. Jake listened from his room as she gathered her purse and keys and bustled out the front door. The minute he heard her car back out of the driveway, Jake leapt off his bed and made a beeline for Anna's room. Just like before, a sense of illicit wonder fell over him as he entered Anna's domain. Her closet seemed to beckon him with its forbidden delights. This time, he selected a coral-colored skater dress with a lacy overlay. He stripped off his clothes and slipped the dress over his head. This one zipped up the back as well, but he was able to get it most of the way up on his own, twisting his arms at an awkward angle. The snug bust stretched to accommodate his flat chest and the flouncy skirt swirled out from his waist. Jake picked out some coral flats to match and stepped into them. He dug through Anna's hair accessories until he found a pretty braided headband and arranged it atop his mop of unruly dark curls. Heart racing with anticipation, he approached the vanity to apply his makeup. Foundation, blush, three coats of mascara, and a swipe of shimmery coral lip gloss. He finished it off with some silver bangles on his wrists. Perched on the poof in front of Anna's mirror, Jake lost himself in his reflection, in the beautiful stranger gazing back at him. He primped and preened, trying out different poses, tossing imaginary long hair over his shoulder. At some point, he ventured out of the bedroom, too caught up in the fantasy to worry about the neighbors possibly spotting him through the lace curtains as he twirled around the living room. He felt radiant, euphoric, invincible. The rattle of the garage door opening catapulted Jake out of his dreamland. His mom was home. Panic seized him as he realized how much time had passed. He raced for the stairs, cursing the limited range of motion caused by the dress's cinched waist and pencil skirt. As he stumbled into Anna's room again, he heard the door from the garage into the house open and close, his mom's footsteps in the kitchen. There was no time to change! Frantic, Jake dove under Anna's bed, barely squeezing into the cramped space. His labored breathing stirred up dust bunnies, and he fought the urge to sneeze. Wide-eyed and shaking, Jake strained to listen for sounds of his mom's approach. He could hear her calling his name. Jake! Honey, I'm home! Jake, where are you? Her voice got louder as she climbed the stairs. Jake pressed a trembling hand over his glossy mouth to muffle his terrified panting. Please don't come in here, he mentally begged. Please don't find me like this. After what felt like an eternity, he finally heard his mom's footsteps retreat back downstairs. Tears of relief welled in Jake's mascaraed eyes. He dragged himself out from under the bed and surveyed the damage. The dress was coated in dust bunnies and crumpled from his undignified army crawl. He brushed it off as best he could but it was obvious the dress had been on the floor. Nose wrinkling at the sour taste of adrenaline in his mouth, Jake unzipped and stepped out of the dress. Hands quivering with the aftershocks of his close call, Jake hung the coral skater dress back in the closet. He stared at it for a long moment. Not daring to take the time to properly remove the makeup, Jake simply dressed in his own clothes again, and bundled up the dress under his arm. He crept across the hallway to his own bedroom, heart in his throat as he prayed his mom wouldn't emerge from downstairs. Jake shut his bedroom door and leaned against it, exhaling shakily. He looked down at the dress crumpled in his white-knuckled grip. He knew he couldn't risk returning it to Anna's closet now, and yet he couldn't bring himself to stuff it in his laundry hamper either, to condemn it to the washing machine to remove all traces of his transformative experience. 
Almost reverently, Jake knelt and stashed the dress under his bed, smoothing it out lovingly. There it would remain, a hidden treasure, his secret portal to another world, a world of satin and lace, where he was graceful and elegant and free. Sighing, Jake flopped onto his bed and squeezed his eyes shut, trying to ingrain the magical sensations into his memory. Day after day, the dress haunted Jake, its presence burning a hole under his mattress. Every night, he dreamed of it, of that thrilling feminine feeling. He was extra careful to keep his room tidy, lest his mom go poking under the bed and discover his secret. Weeks passed. Jake grew increasingly distressed, feeling like an addict cut off from his drug of choice, always looking for the next high. Brief moments alone in the house were no longer enough. He needed more than rushed makeup experiments and dress-up sessions. Late one night, Jake made a decision. Determination swelled in Jake's chest as he finished counting out the bills from his birthday stash. He had been saving for a new video game, but this was more important. His hands shook as he stuffed the cash into his wallet. This was really happening. He was going to buy his first dress. The thrift store was on the other side of town, far from prying eyes who might recognize him. Jake's heart raced as he stepped inside, the tinkling bell on the door sounding unnaturally loud to his paranoid ears. The cashier, an older woman with cat-eye glasses, barely glanced up from her crossword puzzle. Jake kept his head down anyway as he hurried to the women's section. Rifling through the racks of garments, Jake tried to look like he knew what he was doing. Like he belonged here. He gravitated to the dresses, letting his fingers brush reverently over the varied fabrics and textures. It was thrilling to be able to take his time, to really look, without the fear of discovery constantly looming. A seafoam green sundress caught his eye, fitted bodice with dainty cap sleeves, flowy knee-length skirt covered in delicate lace. Jake held it up, mesmerized. He glanced at the tag, size six. His men's shirts were mediums, so that seemed about right. On impulse, Jake grabbed a few more items that called to him, a gauzy lavender blouse, a silky floral wrap dress, and a stunning red fit and flare number that made his breath catch. Arms laden with his haul, Jake made his way to the tiny fitting room in the back. The first dress he tried on, the seafoam green one, fit like it was made for him. The cap sleeves skimmed his shoulders, and the cinched waist made him look curvy in all the right places. Jake stared at himself in the mirror, tears pricking his eyes. For the first time, he didn't just feel pretty in a dress, he felt beautiful like his truest self. Mind made up, Jake changed back into his boy clothes and made his purchases, face flaming as he scurried past the register. This wasn't the shameful secret it had been when he snuck into Anna's room. This was the start of something new, something right. The mall was Jake's next stop. He beelined for the cosmetics department of a big chain store determined to get some proper makeup of his own. No more rifling through Anna's cast-off lip glosses and dried-out mascara. A spray-tanned, aggressively friendly sales associate in a black apron approached him as he eyed the colorful displays in dazed indecision. Can I help you find anything? She chirped. Jake froze like a deer in headlights. He clearly wasn't the typical customer in this section. I... I'm looking for a gift. For my girlfriend. Jake stammered, the lie tasting bitter on his tongue. Why couldn't he just tell her the truth? That the makeup was for him. But old habits and fear were hard to shake off. The sales associate, whose name tag read Amber, nodded sagely. I've got you covered. Come on, I'll show you our best sellers. Any idea what shades she likes? In a whirlwind of brushes and compacts and lipstick tubes, Jake found himself perched on a stool as Amber demonstrated product after product on the back of his hand, 
chattering all the while. This foundation is amazing. It'll make her skin totally flawless, but still look natural, you know? And this mascara, wow, talk about volume, really makes the eyes pop. Okay, and you've got to get her this eyeshadow palette. It's got the perfect mix of neutrals and some fun pops of color. Jake's head spun as he tried to keep up, to pick products he thought would look good with his skin tone and features. Ones he could learn to apply without makeup remover wipes constantly on standby. He hoped he wasn't going overboard as the pile of cosmetics steadily grew, but he couldn't help himself. Each item was a shimmery, colorful key to the version of himself he was desperate to unlock. By the time Jake walked out of the mall, his wallet was significantly lighter and his shopping bags significantly heavier. The thrill of his successful secret mission buoyed him the whole drive home, a huge smile on his face as he envisioned all the pretty, feminine looks he would create. Looks worthy of the name that had been bouncing around his head lately when he thought of his female self, Jace. Similar enough to Jake, but softer, daintier. Just like he felt in a dress and heels, over the next few weeks, Jake, or Jace rather, threw herself into perfecting her costuming and makeup skills. Every moment alone was spent locked in her bedroom, blasting YouTube tutorials and trying out different styles. Jace learned how to achieve a flawless foundation base that made her skin glow. She experimented with winged eyeliner and watched in delight as it made her eyes look bigger, more feminine. The first time she managed a perfect red lip, she nearly cried at how glamorous it made her feel. Each day she grew more adept at walking in the cheap heels she had scored on clearance, hips swaying and head held high in Jace's world of satin and lace. Her outside finally matched her inside. The more time she spent as Jace, the more like herself she felt, bubbly, vivacious, radiant. Jake's boy clothes started to feel like the costume, the ill-fitting skin she couldn't wait to shed. Her family remained oblivious to her double life, too caught up in their own routines to notice the changes in her, how she took longer in the bathroom in the mornings, more concerned with her hair and skin, how she saved up her chore money for fashion magazines and makeup hauls, how she deferred more and more when Anna asked to hang out, not wanting to slip up and give herself away. The idea came to Jace one evening as she touched up her lip gloss and adjusted her skirt, about to change back into Jake's clothes before dinner. Her eyes fell on a flyer peeking out of her backpack, the upcoming spring fling dance at school. Jace's heartbeat quickened as a plan formed in her mind, a way to share her authentic self with the world, if only for one magical night she spent days obsessing over the details of her scheme, the dress she would wear, the stunning red fit and flare she had been saving for a special occasion, the shoes, dainty silver kitten heels to match the sparkly barrette in her hair, the makeup, a romantic smoky eye and bold red lip. She carefully sealed the Jake side of herself away, not letting herself get caught up in the anxiety and what-ifs of discovery. When the night of the dance finally arrived, Jace could barely contain her excitement as she got ready in secret. Her hands shook as she unzipped the garment bag containing her dress. The silky fabric slid over her skin like a revelation, clinging to her curves in all the right places. She twirled in front of the mirror, relishing the feel of the chiffon underskirt swishing around her freshly shaved legs. Jace took her time applying her makeup, blending and smudging until she achieved the perfect balance of sultry and sweet. She couldn't stop grinning at her reflection, at the woman smiling back at her. A spritz of perfume at her wrists and neck, and she was ready. She stepped into her heels and practiced her walk one more time, concentrating on keeping her steps light and graceful. Jace caught a glimpse of herself in the full-length mirror on her way out, and paused, breath catching. The girl looking back at her was elegant, alluring, confident, 
Everything Jace had always dreamed of being. Heart fluttering with anticipation, Jace grabbed her small silver clutch and took one last, steadying breath. Then she quietly slipped out of the house, careful not to let her heels clack too loudly on the hardwood floor. She held her head high as she navigated the sidewalk, a thrill running through her at the thought of passers-by seeing her like this, truly being seen for who she was inside and out. As she approached the school, following the flow of dressed-up students heading into the gymnasium, Jace felt a giddy sort of recklessness take hold. She had pulled it off. She was here, in public, presenting herself to the world the way she had always longed to, the way that felt honest and right in a bone-deep way. She savored every detail, the click of her heels on the pavement, the brush of her skirt against her thighs, the bounce of her hair as she walked. Jace felt radiant, untouchable. Inside the gym, Jace was immediately swept up in the glittering fantasy scape of streamers and paper lanterns, the sparkling mini lights, and punch bowl on frilly skirted tables. She reminded herself to relax, to stop wildly scanning the room for any hint of recognition from her classmates. To them, she was just another girl, blending in among the swirl of chiffon and taffeta and sequins. No one was looking at her, funny or whispering behind her back. Jace sighed in relief, letting herself get lost in the music and dance along to the infectious pop beat. Several songs in, flushed and beaming, Jace made her way to the punch bowl for a breather. The combination of nerves and vigorous dancing had left her parched. As she reached for a plastic cup, a voice behind her froze her in place like a slug of ice water down her spine. Oh my god, Jake, is that you? Jace whirled around in horror to see none other than Anna gaping at her, eyes wide as saucers. Jace felt the bottom drop out of her stomach as she stood there, cup still suspended in midair, paralyzed under her sister's incredulous gaze. This couldn't be happening. Not now, when everything had been going so perfectly. What are you wearing? Anna continued, voice shrill. She moved forward and grabbed Jace's arm, spinning her around. Jace went rigid, heart thundering in her ears. She couldn't form a single word in her defense. This is my dress! Anna gasped, recognition sparking in her eyes. I knew it went missing months ago! Jace felt hot tears building behind her eyes, but she refused to let them fall. She yanked her arm out of Anna's grasp and took a deep breath, stealing herself. She would not cower or run, not this time. Yes, I borrowed the dress once, Jace said with a calmness she didn't feel. Her hands clenched around the skirt's full hem. But this one is mine. I bought it myself. Just like I bought this makeup, these shoes, and everything else I'm wearing. Jace met Anna's gaze dead on, feeling untold emotions welling up inside her. But beneath it all, steely resolve. She was done hiding, done pretending. This is me, Anna, Jace said softly, gesturing to her outfit, her whole self. The real me. I've been dressing up and exploring my feminine side for months now. I can't keep it a secret anymore. She swallowed hard against the lump in her throat. You have no idea how amazing it feels to be able to express myself this way. To feel like my outsides match my insides. Like I'm not two halves at war anymore. Her eyes pleaded with Anna to understand. Anna was quiet for a long moment, staring at Jace with an unreadable expression. Jace held her breath simultaneously terrified and hopeful. This was it, the moment of truth. Her sister's reaction would change everything. Finally, Anna exhaled slowly, brow furrowed. Wow, Jake, I, I had no idea you were going through this. She bit her lip, seeming to struggle for words. It's Jace, actually. Jace interjected softly. That's the name I've chosen. 
for when I'm like this, I mean. She gestured to her decidedly feminine presentation. Anna nodded slowly, still looking a bit shell-shocked, but also like she was trying to process, to understand. Okay, Jace, she said, carefully, trying out the new name. She took a tentative step closer to Jace, reaching out to finger the silky fabric of the dress. This is a lot to take in, Anna admitted. But I can see how happy it makes you, how much more confident and comfortable you seem. A small smile quirked her glossy lips. I have to admit, you wear that dress better than I ever could. Jace's heart soared so fast she felt dizzy with it. Tears sprang to her eyes again, but this time from sheer overwhelming relief and gratitude. Thank you, she whispered, voice choked with emotion. You have no idea how much that means to me. Overcome, she pulled Anna into a hug, not caring that she was probably squishing the delicate chiffon. Anna hugged her back tightly, and Jace let out a shuddering breath, tension draining from her body. She pulled back after a long moment, sniffling and dabbing carefully at her eyes so as not to smudge her liner. Anna squeezed her shoulder and smiled at her, warm and genuine. I'm glad you told me, Anna said seriously, looking Jace in the eye. I'm sorry if I ever made you feel like you couldn't share this part of yourself with me, but I'm here now and I've got your back. Always. Jace nodded, swallowing back another surge of emotion. She knew they still had a lot to talk about, that this was only the first step on a long road. But for now, hearing those words of acceptance from her sister, she felt invincible, like she could handle anything the future threw at her. Now come on, Anna grinned, looping her arm through Jace's and pulling her towards the dance floor. Let's go show this dance what the stylish sisters are made of. Jace laughed and let herself be tugged along, steps light and smile huge. For the first time, she didn't feel any flicker of fear or self-consciousness. As she lost herself once more to the music and the magic of the night, surrounded by glitter and balloons and her sister's unconditional love, Jace finally felt free, free to be unapologetically, gloriously herself.